Members of the Rob Corps, myself and Comic Storian will be at New York Comic Con this year. We are hosting a panel on Friday, October 6th from 7.45 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. Last time we did a panel, we had 400 people show up. No idea if we're going to get those same numbers this time because we're at night. <laughs> but in order to lure you in, uh, I will have Rob Corps rings. Yes, I have ordered 15 size 12 rings, 15 size 9 rings, and 15 size 10 rings uh those will be given away at the actual con like at the panel so hopefully uh hopefully we'll have enough i have no idea i mean we ordered basically 45 no idea if we'll actually have that many people show up i don't know never really hosted a panel at like eight o'clock at night uh which is kind of a weird thing but i digress on to the video so batman red death is really 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 cool for a couple of reasons um the idea of batman being like an evil version of the flash is cool but it's also it seems like some of the rules that dc's creating when it comes to these various you know alternate universes is really what this is now it's very cloak and dagger in terms of how this whole concept exists right because it's not fully fleshed out i mean we're still learning about dark knight's metal and presumably this will have lasting effects that will go forward into dc rebirth the indication from me is that this is basically an opposite multiverse in the sense that in DC comics, you've got the multiverse, right? And it's just 52 Earths. That's it. I mean, you've got like gods and you've got realms and spheres and different things like that, but there's only 52 Earths that exist out there in the multiverse. Now, there's also the idea that there's like multiple multiverses, but we don't need to get into that. That's more of like an omniverse than anything else, but that within the, the new 52 branding, so to speak, there's only 52 Earths. Then there's the opposite opposite side you know there is two sides of the same coin basically heads is all the good earths where batman became green lantern different things like that the bottom side is 52 different earths where everything that can go wrong has gone wrong now this is kind of a crazy scenario because what this initially does is it actually just sort of picks up with batman chasing after barry allen and it's kind of cool here because again this hits into the whole like intelligence of bruce wayne with enough prep time he can do anything but you also have to remember this is more of an ally as opposed to like a straight up enemy not only that batman's actually using a lot of the villains of the various rogues that exist out there but so are uh so so is flash like barry allen is literally throwing like mirror master tricks and so on and so forth but this also has a very dark Knight returns-esque feel to it and the reason why i say that is back before batman was out selling superman uh he was just a guy whose book was on the verge of cancellation frank miller wrote the dark Knight returns and that's why it is that batman fought superman for the very first time and they've been fighting ever since i mean they fight all the time now i mean you get all these stories where they battle one another because people really really love it now anything in excess is never a good thing but you know it is cool to see those conflicts take place place however dark knight returns gave us this kind of dystopian future where like the entire bat family was gone uh bruce wayne had basically just sort of retired there was really no one defending gotham it had just kind of run amok uh, eventually he came out of retirement went back to saving gotham fought superman beat him there were a lot of other things that were going on with regards to that story but this is much the same way and the reason for this is because within this universe the entire bat family is basically dead batgirl dick grayson damian wayne jason todd tim drake they're all gone now we don't know who killed them we don't know what it was that killed them we're just kind of left to presume from the wording of, of batman that they were quote unquote consumed by gotham and all that really means is they were probably just killed by miscellaneous villains over the course of however long you know jason todd was probably killed by the joker just like the way he was in the original death of the family story uh tim tim drake barbara gordon different things like that they just fell somewhere along the line and what this has done is it's put Batman in this mindset where he almost seems totally irrational. And that's why I say this is kind of like the opposite of the way the multiverse is supposed to be. Because usually Batman is like the most level-headed. Batman is really like the least emotional and the most logical. When everybody else is running around fighting and beating things up, Batman's doing the same thing, but he's calculating all the variables. He's calculating all the constants, all the odds. What do we need to do in order to assure, you know, to ensure that we come out on this this conflict as opposed to just hoping we do by superman and wonder woman's strength and speed and so on with this scenario uh he is logical 
but he's basically insane. The idea here is that with the Speed Force, Barry Allen can basically use its power to run back and forth through time. And the idea of Bruce Wayne is that he wants to essentially steal the Speed Force power or use it to go back in time and save people's lives. And that's why things get kind of crazy because what we learned with Flashpoint is that there's always consequences, right? With a Flashpoint story, Barry Allen went back in time and saved his mom from being killed by, you know, Reverse Flash, Eobard Thawne. The result is that he spawned the Flashpoint universe, where Bruce Wayne died instead of Thomas and Martha Wayne. Thomas Wayne became Batman, Martha Wayne became the Joker. You know, the Atlanteans and the Amazons were at war with one another. Aquaman and Wonder Woman were trying to kill each other. Superman had never been discovered by the Kents. He crash landed on Earth. He was immediately grabbed by the government and stuck in a bunker underground. I mean, there were all these massive changes that went on and they were huge in terms of how they unfolded. So Barry Allen said, okay, this is totally wrong. He goes back in time, he lets his mom die and then he wakes up in a different universe, in the new 52. You can never go back to the way things used to be, that no matter what change you make, it changes things forever. And Barry Allen has learned that lesson time and time again, either by watching others do it or by doing it himself. And so in this scenario, the logic that he spills to Bruce Wayne is, if you go back in time and you save the life of Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson and Jason Todd and Tim Drake and Damian Wayne, there's no telling what the universe will be like. It could be that you save their lives, but in that moment when you were not there for them or whatever the case may be, they just develop this insane hatred for you. And the result is that you basically show up in a universe where you're supposed to be dead because they killed you and they've basically taken over the world. They killed all the superheroes. Any number of things could happen, but it's the fact that you don't know what the outcome will be that makes time travel so dangerous. Now, the other half of this is the way the speed force works because it's kind of a funny scenario. If we go back and we read Flash Boy, Born to Run, I think it was, where uh, the Flash Wally West outran the universe. He ran from the edge of the universe all the way to Earth in like almost a split second. Um, one of the things that we're told is that the speed force is infinite. There's no limit to the speed force. But if we go and reread Jeff John's Flash Rebirth, we're told the speed force is finite, that only so many speedsters can tap into the speed force. If you read Flashpoint, it's the exact same thing. You know, well, I'm sorry, uh, Barry Allen needs to travel back into the past, but he can't because Eobard Thawne is using the speed force. And because they're both using it at the same time, there's not enough energy for Barry Allen to travel back into the past. So it depends on what writer it is that we're talking about. But regardless, of how the speed force is depicted with regards to this scenario here what we know is that only people who have a connection to the speed force can basically enter it the speed force is a locked door the only people with the keys are speedsters now this is just like any other locked door right if you know the person with a key you put a gun to their back make them walk up to the door and unlock it and that's what batman does here batman literally knocks out barry allen after manipulating his speed powers you know tricking him uh essentially messing with his mind and then in turn straps him to to the front of the, of the Batmobile and races him into the speed force. <laughs> now, under normal circumstances, our initial thought would be, okay, so Barry Allen enters the speed force and then Batman enters and dies. That's not true. Remember, we've seen instances where people who are not part of the Flash family, which is to say, who are not speedsters, have been thrust and locked into the speed force. Case in point, Superboy Prime. We saw that during Infinite Crisis. Superboy Prime was grabbed by the speedsters. He was raced into the speed force. Barry Allen grabbed him and pulled him in, you know, and he was basically locked there for however long. Now, of course, he re-emerged and then just absolutely massacred the Earth superheroes. But up until that point, uh, we had never really seen a lot of instances where a person who was not a speedster had been locked in the speed force. We'd seen it before, but Superboy Prime is the most popular example, and that's why I use that. But the idea here is that with Batman going into the speed force and basically murdering Merging himself with Barry Allen, what he ends up doing is stepping out as the Red Death. Now, this is kind of an interesting situation because the implication here is that there's one of two scenarios going on. The first scenario is that this guy, Bruce Wayne, is just now an evil bad guy. Like, he's just a villain. That's it. He's just an evil dude, and there's no way for him to come back from this. The other half of that is that Bruce Wayne is not entirely lost. Now, the way in which this happens is that when he steps out of the Speed Force and his world 
world is basically crashing down around him that there's almost like this inner turmoil, right? Like Barry Allen speaks to Bruce Wayne and says, look, you're not a bad guy. You know, you can go back and you can fix this. And there's a brief moment of hesitance. Now, it also seems like this power has basically run to Bruce Wayne's head. Maybe he's possibly even possessed. We don't know that for an absolute truth. All we know is this guy, Red Death, refers to himself as Bruce Wayne. And so the implication is that it is Bruce Wayne acting of his own accord. He doubts himself a bit, but it doesn't matter. The other thing here is that with this universe basically crashing down or with this earth basically being destroyed, what this seems to do is hit home at the idea of rules within the multiverse. When it comes to the multiverse in DC Comics, for the most part, their depiction of how the various worlds exist has really just kind of been free reign, right? Like, I mean, Infinite Crisis introduced like the monitors, different things like that. Final Crisis gave us the monitors again and so on. And it was this idea that the monitors serve the purpose of making sure that the Earth's heroes never crossed over, that Earth 1 didn't show up on Earth 2, Earth 2 didn't show up on Earth 3, and that was about it. After that, it was whatever goes on in those worlds goes on in those worlds. Just do what you want to, just make sure, you know, you don't show up in somebody else's house and so it was really that the monitors were more of like prison guards as opposed to actually people who were maintaining you know the house and so on and so forth they weren't really landlords but in this instance uh what this seems to do is it hit uh, hits home at these finite rules things are supposed to happen a certain way certain characters are always supposed to live if they die it quote unquote breaks things you know for example let's take like this scenario with the bat family we don't know if it was the death of the bat family that triggered this we don't know if it was bruce wayne making the decision to go after the flash that triggered this all we know is that this world is just crumbling to pieces it's basically falling apart and the implication seems to be it's because bruce wayne is playing a character he's not supposed to be he's breaking the rules of the multiverse he's breaking the rules of this universe now if this is true because at this point this is just speculation on my part it's not being told that it's true it's just kind of my guess but if this is true it would change everything because what it does is it basically takes this whole idea of in every universe there's a batman in every universe there's a superman in every universe there's a flash there's a wonder woman so on and so forth it takes that from the realm of being well that's just kind of how things worked out to being this is the way it always is there's always a flash in every universe there's always a batman there's you know there's always a justice league there's always these superheroes and they always exist because if they don't the world simply just can't exist for whatever reason. Now, something else that ends up happening here is that this Red Death actually displays a power that we've never seen before. When it comes to speedsters stealing the abilities or stealing the speeds of other powers or other, other characters, usually it is an extension of themselves in the sense that they have to like run up on them, they have to touch them, something along those lines. You know, it's not really like a telekinetic or a telepathic thing. In this instance, Red Death is like accompanied by these bats, which is super cool. And when he shows up in the new 50, to earth uh these bats immediately attack like the other you know the the other uh new 52 wally west and like drain him of his speed force powers to the point that he basically just grows super old and it gets crazy because then Barry Allen shows up. Of course, you know, this flash from Earth Zero shows up and simply says, like, you are not going to face off against my guys. You know, you're not going to attack my friends, yada, yada, yada. But before he can step in and before he can actually fight Red Death, what we end up finding out is that his speed force powers are basically being, they're being siphoned. They're being taken away. Now, again, in the middle of all this, Dr. Fate grabs him and whisks him away. And that's a big deal because with Dr. Fate showing up, he is the predecessor to Doctor Strange, right? Like Doctor Doctor Fate existed long before Doctor Strange, but he's a guy that DC does not invoke very often. But when they do, it means things are about to pop off. Usually whenever Dr. Fate intervenes, it means that the universe is moving in a direction to where if those who are not whisked away to a quote unquote safe place, uh, if that's not actually done, they'll basically die. It's essentially DC coming in and saying the universe, the, the, you know, the prime DC universe is now on a collision course. Dr. Fate is literally running around and grabbing these guys up because they're the only ones who are going to be able to stave off against the coming threat. What it also seems to indicate is that if Barry Allen and if Red, uh, Red Death were to actually face one another, Barry Allen would die. He would be killed. Now, again, that's why Dr. Fate intervenes. Otherwise, he would have just waited, you know, and then Flash would have killed Red Death and that would have been it. And so it's an interesting situation because, again, it really hits home at this idea that there's a much bigger picture here, that all these universes are crashing down, all these universes are ending because things are not right with them. And the things that are not right are contextual based on the origin stories of each character that we'll see. Again, a lot of this is really mysterious. We don't know what direction things are heading in. We don't know what's going to happen. 
happened. We can just kind of look at it, guess, and hope we understand. <laughs> well, with that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. And yeah, I will catch you all later. Peace.